Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my channel is dedicated to helping victims of narcissistic abuse to break free of the never ending side effects that come with this type of chronic manipulation. So today I wanted to talk about brain fog. I want to talk about the symptoms of brain fog, what it looks like, what it feels like in your life. I want to talk about why victims of narcissistic abuse wind up with brain fog. And then my favorite part, my favorite part of every video is then what to do about it. Once you understand it, that's wonderful, but what to do about it. So if you're interested in that, make sure you watch to the end. That being said, let's dive in. For those that don't know me, my name is Michelle. I'm a life and relationship coach. I specialize in narcissistic abuse, childhood trauma, and CPTSD recovery. I'm also the founder of the Thriver School of Transformation, which is a monthly membership where we meet every week on Zoom. We meet live and we do the inner work together. So if you're looking for that weekly support, make sure you check out the links in the description box. I'll also leave something here. And I'm also the founder of the Trauma-Informed Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Coaching Certification Program, which helps people People that were victims that became survivors shift into coaching and they then become the individuals that are helping others to change their lives. Okay. So let's talk about some signs of brain fog. So here are five symptoms. They're not the only symptoms, but they are five that I see a lot of. They're five that I went through myself as well. Number one is memory problems. I know that before I underwent long-term narcissistic abuse, I had a really good memory. In fact, I was thinking about this the other day and I remember a friend of mine, he told me, this was somebody that we would see each other every few months. And he told me, he's like, Michelle, like, it's crazy. We get together, we talk, we talk deep. And then I don't see you for a few months. And you literally remember exactly where we ended our conversation and you start exactly as if no time has gone by. That's how good my memory was. Like I could remember people, conversations, where we were. It was no effort. After narcissistic abuse, I couldn't remember people I had just spoken to the week prior. I couldn't remember the conversation I had yesterday. I couldn't remember where I put my keys. There was this drastic change in memory. That is one huge sign of brain fog. Number two is this disconnect from yourself. It's almost like somebody has removed an emotional chip from you in one way or another. And if it's not an emotional chip, it's almost like you just feel separated from your, from your life. It's almost like you're an actor or an actress in a movie. You're the main character, but you don't really feel connected. It's like you're watching your life as if it's a movie. Number three is clear thinking and clear decision-making abilities are gone. So it's like you have difficulty just thinking, concentrating, Trying to make a decision seems really difficult or is poor concentration. It's almost like it's almost like you're unable to really concentrate to the point of retaining. So think about it. Tell me if you can relate to this. Let me know in the comment section below. But were there times when you looked up information about the narcissist, learned about them? It resonated, something clicked. You literally got it in that video. And then the next day, it's as if you have to rewatch the same information and then get it again. You lose it, you watch it, you get it, you lose it. That is a sign of brain fog. And then the last one I'm going to mention for the sake of this video is you either are stuck in a state of depression or high anxiety or flinging from one to the other with nothing in the middle. Okay. Those are some symptoms of brain fog. So let's shift into why is it that most, if not all victims of narcissistic abuse wind up struggling with brain fog. Okay. It really has to do with the fact that the treatment that you get from somebody that's high on the scale of NPD, whether it's overt, right? And really horrible, obvious abuse or covert where it's seemingly under the radar, right? It doesn't matter whether it's overt or covert because you're in this chronic state of stress due to that type of abuse, that type of psychological manipulation. This type of treatment that they give changes the structure of your brain. Scientists have done studies that show that there's a direct correlation 
between the levels of cortisol that a person has and the size of their hippocampus. So the two brain structures that we're going to talk about for the sake of this video are your hippocampus and your amygdala. Your hippocampus being the area where short-term memory is stored, where your learning center is. In order to be able to learn and to create memories, we need a functioning hippocampus. Well, because narcissistic abuse is constantly provoking you, provoking your nervous system to be on. That's why we say that people that are undergoing narcissistic abuse are walking on eggshells because their nervous system is constantly on guard. Well, when your nervous system is constantly on guard like that, you're feeling stress. And to feel stress, the body has to have certain hormones that allow you to feel stress. And those, one of those hormones is cortisol. And so because you have an excess amount of cortisol, this attacks the hippocampus and it shrinks it. Your ability to learn, to think clearly, to have memories is drastically affected. And at the same time, because those high levels of cortisol, they're in part shrinking the hippocampus, but they are also in part activating your amygdala. The amygdala is responsible for your fear. It's your emotional center. And it's also where fight or flight originate. So because of the cortisol, this is stimulating your amygdala and keeping you in that fight or flight state of mind. When you're in that fight or flight state of mind, you are spending more time in your survival brain, the survival areas of your brain, as opposed to your prefrontal cortex. And so this enlarges your amygdala. So you have an overactive emotional center and an underactive learning center that starts to take place. And here's the hard part. Because narcissists keep you in that state chronically over a long period of time, Victims of narcissistic abuse wind up getting stuck in a chronic or seemingly permanent state of fear, anxiety, and feeling a lack of safety. And even if the narcissist is removed, leaves, or you wake up and realize that this is toxic and you wind up detoxing your life from people that are very damaging and very toxic, even if they're gone, your body is now stuck in this state. It doesn't go away just because the narcissist is gone. And I think that's the information where a lot of people need to understand. So what's happening is people are learning. They're learning about this and they're learning that they have brain fog. They're learning about the fact that narcissistic abuse causes it. And then think about it. Because their hippocampus is damaged, the information isn't retained. So they're constantly, chronically, watching videos and information to learn more and to keep the information about the narcissist in the front of their mind. And again, that is helpful, helpful information to have, but it's not going to reverse what the narcissist did. It's not going to reverse the size of your hippocampus. It's not going to shrink your amygdala back to the size that it should be. It's not going to get you to start thinking and living in different areas of your brain or from different areas of your brain. It's going to explain what happened. But that's not what's going to heal it. And so let's shift into, well, then what do we do? And just to try to help you to understand the importance of doing something after you learn this information, our hippocampus is involved in, for, in the formation or the ability to form new memories. If our hippocampus is damaged and cannot do that, we wind up staying stuck in the memories from the past constantly regurgitating everything that has happened from the past, everything about the narcissist, everything about the abuse. And that is where we can stay stuck. So rather than growing and creating our, our life afterward, we can get stuck in the past. And I have seen it too much. I did it far longer than I, I care to admit. I also get clients that have been out of the relationship, some for over a decade, but they're still stuck because of this very reason. So a big part of healing is really helping yourself to rewire your brain, training your brain to get that healthy functioning back again. And so I'm going to mention a few things that are helpful. One thing that is helpful is EMDR. There was a study shown that in just a few sessions doing EMDR, that 
people were able to increase the volume of their hippocampus by 6%. Something else that's really helpful is EFT, which is emotional freedom technique, which by the way, we do in Thrivers every other Friday. We do that together as a group. And what this does is it's retraining your amygdala as well. Something else that's helpful, guided meditations and guided visualizations. Mindful meditation is really helpful. And one thing that was on a list in one article that I was reading with uh, when it came to things that are helpful to calm the amygdala and strengthen your hippocampus were acts of altruism. And altruism being having selfless acts of compassion for people where you do it without hoping for anything back. So this is where victims of narcissistic abuse, we have to really be careful because sometimes we can be doing things thinking that we're being altruistic when what we're really doing is maybe people pleasing. So it's not people pleasing. It's doing things out of compassion without expecting whether somebody likes you, whether they even knew that you did something, but it's doing these things also has a really good effect on the brain. Now, I do want to say that when it comes to this type of rewiring and retraining of the brain, consistency is important. I think sometimes we tend to do something and expect a result. And when we don't see it, we give up too quickly and we miss out on the benefit of being able to see how we're building as we're growing and we're healing through or after narcissistic abuse. So that being said, the reason I mentioned that is because in Thriver School of Transformation, we do the inner work to rewire the brain, to rewire the nervous system, to work through the side effects of narcissistic abuse every single week. We have our learning on Tuesday. On Friday, we do group coaching or EFT. Sundays, we do breath work. During our learnings on Tuesday, we often do exercises that are helpful for the nervous system, guided meditations, guided visualizations. And we do them together in a group. So that also gives us the support that we need. So if you've been struggling and you've been stuck for a long time, and you're, you've are you been trying different things and you're like, why is nothing working? Make sure you check out Thriver School of Transformation. In the month of March, we're going to educate and regulate when it comes to our nervous system. And we're going to do a lot of different exercises that are super, super helpful. So if you're battling brain fog and a dysregulated nervous system, make sure you check us out, even if it's just for the month of March.